We are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is How to CPCU coming at you every single Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we have a fantastic show set up for you today. Great guest. Um, as usual, actually, not as usual, we have a little status update. Um, Professor Heather Blevins is joining me as my partner in crime from here on out. <laughs> Congratulations, Heather. Thanks so much, Matt. Really excited to be teaching Intro to Insurance at Illinois Wesleyan coming up in the spring as an adjunct instructor. So. That's awesome. That's yep. awesome. Right. R right in line with the uh, the CPCU tenants, you know, bringing that uh, education to others and, and improving the, the insurance industry. I think that's going to be fantastic opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm sure those kids are going to be in good hands. That's awesome. Um, before we get rolling, a little business to take care of here. If you are watching live, we can take comments and questions. So you, if you do have any comments or questions for our special guest, Heather or myself, please feel free to share those. We can address them as they come. Um, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. If you're watching on YouTube, whether it's live or recorded, make sure to hit the notification bell so that when we go, do, do go live in the future, you get a notification. So without further ado, we are joined by Jen Polachek. Uh, Jen, really quickly, for those of you who are not uh, familiar uh, with you, who are you and what do you do? I am, as you said, Jen Polachek. I am the current director of chapter operations for the CPCU Society. Um, I've been with the Society for almost 19 years now, and in my time there, I've been involved with chapters in one way, shape, or form over my entire career. Um, I pretty much do anything and everything for chapters um, and try and help you guys out as much as I can to have your you know, your experience be as pleasant as possible. I, I can say from personal experience, when a question comes up or something like that, pretty much the first email that goes out is it goes to Jen. <laughs> Regardless of the subject matter, if it has to do with chapter operations or, or anything to do with the chapter. I, has, been, has that been your experience, Heather? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Jen is such a resource to every single chapter out there. And just she's she's always willing to help. That's what I love about you, Jen. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, really quickly, before we get into the chapters and things like that, what really brought you to the society and, and working with the chapters in the role that you're in right now? So actually, when I started at the society, I started out as an admin assistant. I didn't really know anything about insurance other than, you know, I had insurance premiums I had to pay for my car insurance and, you know, renter's insurance and things like that. Um, so I had no idea that CPCU was out there, what it meant. Sometimes I'm still confused. Um, <laughs> but I started out as an admin and over the years have worked my way up. I've learned all sorts of different things, um, not so much on the insurance side of things, but how to help chapters and our volunteer leaders manage their chapters uh, so that they can move forward and, and do great things and um, support the society's mission along the way. Yeah. So from from your your point of reference, like if, if you had to narrow it down to like just a couple of, of points, what's really the value proposition that the chapters bring? Because I, I think there are other professional organizations that are out there that are they're chapter based and there are other ones that are out there more just kind of, you know, one large association that that um, kind of coordinates from on high. Uh, but from your perspective, like in terms of the way the CPCU society is set up with those kind of like numerous number of chapters, what's really the value proposition that the chapters are bringing to the table for the individual members? So for me, in, in my mind, chapters are, you guys are a geographic extension of the society. Um, mm -hmm. You're all across, I mean, it's worldwide. We have 125 chapters across the United States. Um, we also have a chapter in Bermuda, in Europe, Korea, and Japan. So we are worldwide. We also have pockets of CPCUs across the world. There's a, a large contingent in India. We also have a group in, in China. Unfortunately, they're not chapters at this point in time, but they're still out there. They're doing good things. Um, to me, you guys are like the boots on the ground. You are able to take what the society provides and do that at a local level um, so that you have more of a, 
a touch with each other. You get to see each other, maybe not so much in person now because of COVID, but you have that local connection. Um, it's more networking on the local level. You can participate in programs and projects together. Um, being involved with a chapter, you have an opportunity to grow your skills. If you decide to be a volunteer leader in your chapter, there's additional benefits that go along with that as well. Yeah. So Jen, what I heard you say there is that chapters are that basically like that local feel. It's like the CPCU society in your backyard basically is what it is for, for members. Um, would you, would you say that, you know, chapters in general are, are probably one of the best ways for new CPCUs or people who are just unfamiliar with what it is the designation means to them. It's probably one of the best ways for them to connect in to the society. I would say that's a, a very good way for you to connect into the society. Interest groups are another. Um, if you're not necessarily looking for that local connection, um, interest groups are another great way to get involved. Um, so there's there's two nice ways. Um, but yeah, chapters are, are more of that local, um, you know, your, your colleague sitting next to you, you know, the, the guy that's down the street. So it's it's a nice connection for you. Yeah. I, I think it's really, um, depending on the chapter, I mean, each chapter basically has its own culture, right? Like, I, I think you, you probably get a feel for this. Some chapters are, what, more professional, others are more kind of like mm -hmm. jovial, social, like, do you get a sense of that? Of course. Um, working with chapters over the years, you find that there's groups that, exactly like you said, Matt, there's some that are more, um, they're more regimented. They might have a chapter meeting every month, every month is planned out, you know, January might be an educational event, then they have a social event the next month, it's, you know, kind of like a cycle for them. Then there's others that maybe they only meet a couple times a year, sometimes it's just a social thing. It all depends on what your members in your area are looking for. So that's one of the things being a volunteer leader of your chapter and being a part of the chapter board it's important to reach out to your membership to see what they are interested in, what they're looking for from you, because what someone in your chapter over in New Jersey is looking for is going to be different than what Heather's is. So it's, it's kind of, you know, a give and take up in the air. You gotta, you gotta check with your members and see what they want. Yeah. I would, what's the culture like in your chapter, Heather? Well, it's, it's massive let's just yeah. say um yeah. there's a lot of people but we we have a good flair and a good mix for everything just because it is such a large chapter we're able to have professional events but then also have that social aspect that is so so important to people um you know the community that that we we all everybody says that our chapter comes from is bloomington but it's really a, a whole group of cities that are around the Bloomington area as well. And we even have like a director that deals with the beyond Bloomington group that, you know, when you, we, we have people that are scattered all, all around the countryside there um, within our chapter. So um, we have networking events, there's social events. They, you know, we, we try to keep it mixed up because we have so such a diverse membership. There are people who want to be involved in just the fun stuff, or maybe they just want to use the CPCU chapter as an outlet for volunteerism, you know, yeah. so they, they do that, or we have the, you know, we have the regular chapter meetings as well, because of the fact that that's a, you know, that's a need for folks. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can tell you that the New Jersey chapter is similar. We're not nearly as big as yours, um, but we're definitely not one of the smallish chapters that's out there. Um, the uh, the feel is very much similar, though. Like we have the events that are very much heady. We have the events that are more social, get together or get together virtually and have a drink or something like that. Um, you know, that that there's kind of like a mix and, and you know, there's networking and then there's also professional development. Um, I, on your end, Jen, when when fo when folks that are leaders and, and again, all the leaders of the chapters, they, they typically don't get paid, right? They're they're volunteer leaders. Um, 
what are the typical issues or, or what are the resources that they're looking to tap into that they're coming to you for? Like what's the standard question or request or something that's coming to you that's hitting your inbox? So a lot of questions that come are roles. What are the roles and responsibilities for the various positions, which mm -hmm. again, depending on the chapter, it could vary from one to another. Um, some chapters only have a president, secretary, treasurer, if they're small. Mm -hmm. Other chapters like yours and Heather's have a larger board, um, president, president elect, and vice president, secretary, treasurer, or different people. It's not one and the same. And then you might have additional board of directors. I know um, Heather, your chapter has, since you are so large, you guys have so many directors that you send into us that the society only tracks so many of them that um, we often don't know what to do with a lot of them. Like you guys have, you know, your golf outing and your historian and, you know, all these other chairs. We only track so many, but um, a lot of, a lot of questions go around roles and responsibilities. You know, what, what do they do? What's the president responsible for? What am I getting myself into? And then once they're there, they say, okay, what do you have available for me to help me in my role and be better at it? Um, so we do currently have a small resources and tools area that we have on the website that's available for the chapter leaders that we have. Um, we're looking to expand that further. Um, I just had a call with our finance training and development committee that I'm a liaison to. We're talking about providing additional resources for chapter treasurers. Chapter treasurers a lot of times are people that have no prior accounting experience and you know it can be a daunting thing to come in and be in charge of depending on your chapter you know tens of thousands of dollars depending on you know your role and and what you guys do in your chapter so um, to be able to provide them with some guidance some tools some tips and tricks um, you know, different different things for them to be able to make their role easier and to make sure that they're doing things appropriately. Yeah, definitely. I so we we have a we have a question. So uh, Aravind was uh, I tuned in last week. So thank you uh, for tuning in multiple weeks, there, Aravind, um, and making this a a, a regular thing. But. Uh, I can throw this to either one of you, you know, what would you recommend for folks who are not able to find time to attend chapter meetings, I would assume in person? Well, I'll jump on that first, Jen. Um, I would say this year has changed the capabilities for that so much. Yeah, it has. Because their chapters are interacting with each other in ways that I, I haven't really seen them do in the past, except when we, you know, maybe some of our leadership would get together at Leadership Summit or at, you know, into risk during the year. Um, there are opportunities for you to be able to attend and be a part of. Matt, I'm going to call out your chapter here. You guys have done a fantastic job in sharing your events with other chapters out there um, and giving people the opportunity to be able to participate virtually in your events. Um, chapters, a lot of times, I know, Matt, you guys were pioneering the idea of, you know, live streaming some of your some of your chapter events on Facebook. So if you don't have the time to make it, a lot of times you're gonna find it in places where you could attend virtually or attend at a time that's more convenient for you and rewatch a particular chapter meeting. So I think that I think there are ways to, to do that, but you also gotta gotta ask yourself about being intentional about selecting the chapter meetings that you want to be a part of too. Mm -hmm. Um, if your chapter offers a lot of meetings during the year, you know, sometimes you can just say, okay, I know I'm going to, I'm going to make my very best effort to make these particular events because I want to be a part of them. Right. And that, that's my suggestion for you. Yeah. Awesome. I, what do you think, Jen? I agree. If there's one thing good that came out of COVID, it is the way that chapters are starting to share. Cause that is one other thing that I would get questions about. I'm looking for a speaker and we're in this area. You know, does anyone know of someone? There would be a little bit of sharing going on, but now more than ever, it seems that chapters are connecting with each other either on Interact or through LinkedIn or other various social media, media channels and sharing information. Like Heather said, more chapters are 
sharing out links to their iDays. You know, if you're a smaller chapter, you're not having one. If you don't have the capability to do things like some of the other chapters do with streaming, be a part of our event. You know, it's a way for chapters to get involved with each other and see what other chapters are doing. You can get ideas from each other and you can meet new people and make, you know, new friends and colleagues and, you know, make those connections through your professional network. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I think uh, I I would completely agree with all those points. The 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 virtual opportunities that have come, I think, are not going to go away. Like there are a lot of skills that were learned from having to adapt to the current situation that we're going to continue to perpetuate on in our you know our, our set of tools going forward as chapters. Um, and and to that collaboration aspect of things, I think it was always there. I think it was just maybe there wasn't um I, I don't even know what to, to say like maybe there wasn't like demand for it or maybe there just wasn't like a perceived need for it I don't I don't know what it was but I've seen so much collaboration within like the last 18 months specifically where I mean hell yesterday I was on uh, a a networking thing for the Dallas chapter where they did like a trivia um hour for like lunchtime right so they had a handful of people like 15 16 people from the chapter log on for lunchtime we did like an online trivia event some of it was insurance some of it wasn't um i took third place because uh much like the new york jets i'm really good out of the gate but then i can't finish the job so um but luckily enough i'm a giants fan or maybe not luckily enough this year but so anyway um yeah so that collaboration is huge we've even i think you've seen a number of the regions get together and start to put put resources resources together. So in the Northeast, we have, you know, five, six, seven chapters that are beginning to coordinate events. You have in the Pacific Northwest, a handful of those chapters that are banding together. So I think it's, um, it, it's a credit to the society that it's stayed decentralized. And, you know, there's a little bit of top down and there's also a little bit of bottom up that also kind of contributes to the success. And that bottom up is obviously driven by the chapters themselves. And, you know, those, those kind of um, diverse, you know, perspectives and how they operate that are that are coming to the table. I, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot a little bit, Jen. I'm going to share um, if I can put this into the stream. So this is the um, this is the CPCU Society website. If anyone's looking for information, if they just go to the so it's CPC, CPCU Society org. If you click on the or just hover over the Get Involved tab at the top and click on Chapters, that brings you to essentially the full listing of these chapters. The one thing I always tell everyone is remember that some of the chapters this is alphabetic, so remember that you know the chapter that might be local to yours might be what's a good example right here at the top like mid Tennessee right well you would think to look for Tennessee starting with T but it's actually starting with M because it's middle so just keep that in mind you might have like a north central or north middle and and south um what are there any other resources on there I know like if we click through to like middle Tennessee it's going to bring you to the middle Tennessee chapter website that's specific to that chapter are there other resources that folks should pay specific attention to Jen, if they're looking for information about their their local chapter? So if you're looking for information on your local chapter, this would probably be the best way to go. Um, unfortunately, some of the chapters that don't utilize their chapter websites that much, um, over time, either it's a chapter that's not really that active, it's someone who doesn't have enough resources for someone that might be updating the website, or some yeah, chapter... Yeah, or some chapters are just kind of moving away from websites and going more to the social media, like the Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, you know, Twitter, things like that. Um, so sometimes you have to, you know, be careful when you're looking. It might be outdated information, but anytime you're looking for a contact, if you can't find someone, by all means, reach out to either me. You can reach out to member resources. We would know someone to put you in contact with if you're looking to get involved at the chapter level, and this might not be up-to-date and current. Um, there's also information, um, if you kind of go back, yeah, if you go to get involved. Um, so there's information about the interest groups there, different committees. 
um, different ways to get involved, not only at the local level, but also at the society level. So that's kind of that, that uh, tab there for you. The, if yeah, you I, I think you also have the resources and tools here on the left, but that is specific uh, to if you're a chapter leader, right? So I was just going to mention that, Matt, so thanks. Um, there are things there. It's mostly geared towards volunteer leaders, but um, I do believe there's a chapter dues, like down the second link from the bottom is chapter dues information. So if you click on that, that would give you a listing of, like you were mentioning, if you go to that listing of the chapter websites, it's basically by the chapter name. But if you look at the chapter dues, which is a PDF document, so it'll download a PDF for you, um, that is listed by state with the chapters listed under it. So that would give you an idea if you're not familiar with the chapters that are available in your area, that way you could kind of see. Or again, you could reach out to us. Um, we just had our dues notices um, went out electronically today and we've had a flood of emails come in and I just answered someone that had said, hey, um, I moved from this state to this one what's the closest chapter for me to San Antonio? So I was able to reach out and let him know what chapter that would be and uh, provide him with a little bit of information for if he's interested in getting involved. So, yeah, that's all, that's all good information. Yeah. I, the, the, um, I, I think the one thing I'll, I'll, I'll pitch this to you, Heather's like, say you're, you're, uh, either one, a CPCU who's been long time, who has your designation and you're like, where the heck do I start in order to get involved, right? Or you're brand new candidate, uh, new CPCU, new designee, um, and maybe you just haven't really been reached out to yet or, or you're early in the process. Like if you're putting that kind of hat on, where's the first place you would go to really kind of make contact or get involved? Yeah, it, I think it kind of depends on the community that you might be in. You know, <laughs> some some communities like, of course, where, I, where I'm at, like, everybody everybody kind of knows who the cpcu chapter is and it's yeah. just a it's just kind of common knowledge but the website is a great place as well and and i was just going to call out jen you know that your account that you set up on the website is a great resource of information for you for chapter information and other things that are going on with with your CPCU designation, other de designations that you might be pursuing. But uh, the question I was going to throw to you, Jen, I know I'm taking us off track for what you asked about, but can people change their chapter within their account now? I think that's all electronified now and really cool where you can just pop over if you move from chapter to chapter. Um, so yes. that's part of your account that's out there, right? Yes, so if you are looking to pay your dues, when you go through your account and you go through the process, um, click the Renew Now button or Join Now, depending on if you're brand new or if you're coming back, um, there is a page that you get to where it has a drop down. If you already have a chapter, it'll have your chapter listed, but there's also a drop down there which you can drop down and see a full list of all the chapters that are available. All you do is click on the one that you want or if you want to belong to multiple chapters, you can click on more than one and add that to your profile. Um, and that will add you to that chapter as well. Now, unfortunately, if you've already paid your dues and it's mid year and you want to change your chapter, you can't change your chapter that way. You would still have to contact member resources and we would have to change it on our end for you. So if you're doing it at the time when you are paying your dues, you would be able to change it yourself. Okay. That's really true. And I would definitely say if if it is something where you had like a mid year change where some say you got moved because you know you changed positions or your company moved you around or something like that, um, definitely reach out to the local chapter that you're moving to anyway, because Absolutely. a lot of them are completely open to allowing you know CPCUs from other chapters to come and get involved and in, you know believe me they'll if, especially if you say you want to volunteer for something they'll <laughs> they'll, they'll take free labor from anywhere. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'll just throw out one other plug there really quick, Matt. And I know we've got a question coming in here from a, a famous. He's a super fan. 
missing star. <laughs> but my, question, my, my plug there is, is that there are a lot of chapters that have a pretty active social media presence as well. Mm. And there are ways that you can contact people within those chapters via Facebook or LinkedIn or uh, Twitter and in a lot of other ways too. So look out there for the chapter on social media too. Yeah. And so uh, to Tony's to Tony's question, um, is the, I, I think, is there a zip code search? Like, can you search by zip code for local chapters or is it strictly just the name search like I showed? So Tony is uh, correct. There used to be. So he squarely saw it. So he did. Uh, but it was on our website that we used to have. That functionality on the new one is not available currently. We also used to have a map, which was kind of handy that you could click on a state and it would bring up the various chapters that were in that state. Um, we are looking to bring, I don't know that we can do the zip code search, but we're looking to bring back at least the map um, in the next month, if possible. So we are working on that. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that, that's, uh, I think that's good information to have. I think regardless, you know, we have, I, I think it's, what's the total chapter count right now? It's uh, 125. Wow, that's that's in, impressive. Like, so we have 125 chapters. I mean, you'll get a pretty good sense if you're looking for. And you know what? I'm like, I, I'm kind of like uh, audibling on the fly here. But like, if I throw this up, can I like Control F search? Check that out. I can Control F search too on the page. So if you do pull up the chapter site and you don't see something that has your state listed, or maybe, you know, again, it's one of those situations where it's like north, middle, or south or something, you can always Control F on the website uh, and look, you know, search for New Jersey or Illinois or wherever your chapter is located in order to figure out whether or not uh, there is one of those chapters that's out there. So that's really good. Um, so in terms of the way that chapters have kind of like existed over time, I mean, how have you seen that? Uh, how have you seen that kind of evolve? I mean, have chapters always kind of fulfilled the same role or is there some something of like an evolving role that chapters are um, kind of providing value wise to the to the members over time here? So in my time with the society, the chapters mission has always been to be the extension of the society and do things to support the society at the local level. Mm. Um, the way it's evolved and the way it's changed, you know, along with the way we evolve, I'm thinking back to back in the beginning when we didn't really have, when chapters first started, our first chapter started in 1944. You didn't have email and you know, computers and things like that the way we do today. So everything was done by mail. Chapters all had post office boxes that everybody went and checked. You know, that's, who has that today? There's very few that still have it. Um, and when a chapter says to me, can you update my post office box? I'm like, well, we don't really track that anymore because if send something to you, it's usually to the chapter president or a treasurer or something, and we send it to your personal address. So um, there's like that and then working with chapter bylaws you know again you can do electronic voting now when you didn't have that option before you do conference calls and video calling now and um, things like that but the underlying mission of the chapter has pretty much been the same it's just what has been the focus over the years that might slightly change if that makes sense yeah no it totally makes sense I, do you happen to know offhand, are there like a handful of chapters that are like the founding chapters? Like which were the original ones? Chicago was the first one. Okay. Chicago so, was the first one. I have a list somewhere where they're listed in order of the formation of chapters. So, mm -hmm. um, and early on, chapters kind of evolved. Um, they were geographic. So in the very beginning when there weren't very many members, um, the first class of CPCUs was only six six guys that got their CPCU and they were scattered across you know the country. So wow. over time, like Pacific Northwest used to be almost all of the West Coast. And over time, as more people populate and more CPCUs come to be, they would break off. 
Um, Chicago used to be one giant chapter, and now it's Chicago. It's Chicago West Suburban and Chicago Northwest Suburban. So it, you know, as things go over time, and you know, different places come in, different employers, different groups, they would break off and become their own chapter. So looking back at historical things and historical records. There's chapters that don't exist anymore because their name has changed and their territory has changed over time. Hmm. And we also have the reverse where there used to be two chapters in Arizona and now there's only one because there was a little chapter out in the middle of nowhere that their employer closed down and moved. So now it's just Arizona covers the entire state of Arizona. Yeah. So I, this is like, Wow, I'm, I'm going down a rabbit hole here. So say someone is like in the middle of nowhere, but they have like what a small broker or a small like small local or regional carrier or something like that. And they, you know, a handful of them are CPCUs or they want to get their CPCUs. Do they have the opportunity to file paperwork and an application to start a chapter in their little neck of the woods? Absolutely. Um, we do have a process that if somebody wants to, I actually have someone who's looking to do exactly that. So I had a conversation with them, gave them some guidelines because we've had chapters in the past and we've learned from various mistakes that you need to have a certain amount of CPCUs that are interested because you need to be able to grow your volunteer leadership. Um, we've had instances where there's a small pocket of people that are really excited and gung-ho and we want to do this. And then they cycle through the chairs and it gets to be burnout. And it's the same like three or four people that are always the president, you know, running everything. And eventually over time, it just doesn't work out. So we try and make sure that we set chapters up for success if they're going to get started. Yeah. So I've got a whole, you know, list of things that we discuss and talk about. And rather than jump off and start being your own chapter right off the bat and being independent, oftentimes I will suggest that you be a subchapter, which is kind of like a committee within a larger chapter. It's an kinda interesting thought. Feet, yeah, kind of get your feet wet, get things running, see how things go before you actually take the leap to be your own entity. So hey, what, what's the minimum number? So like I can't start the sovereign chapter, like the Matthew Struck chapter. I can't start that like as a chapter of one, right? Like that's not going to fly. No, not by yourself, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, um, I'm, I'm resigning myself. Maybe I'll just have to like turn myself into a church or something. I don't know. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> let's talk about um let's talk about kind of like some some of the the more uh like like fun not fun chapters but like fun locations like uh for instance you you mentioned bermuda right so like yeah. anyone i i always tell right now the the governor so the governor that oversees you know those who are not aware, there are governors that oversee like regions, like multiple chapters. And they're kind of like the regional manager almost, right? So uh, Gail Brune is the the governor that oversees New York City chapter and Bermuda, right? And I always told her, I said, I, I want to be the next in line. I'm not a New York City chapter uh, member. I'm not a Bermuda chapter member, but how do I get that job so I can like go visit Bermuda as part of my job, right? So Bermuda has a chapter, but some of the other uh, really interesting ones that are out there are like the Europe chapter, right? They don't have uh, country by country. Uh, they meet, where is it, in Zurich? Is that where they meet? They usually have two places. They will often meet in Zurich and also in London. I believe they flip-flop back and forth. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, I, all right. So first I have to become the governor for New York City and Bermuda. And then I need to become the governor <laughs> for <laughs> Europe so I can go from <laughs> London to Zurich. <laughs> that's plan for CPCU domination is, is unfolding. It's not even just domination. It's just taking the tour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Matt, the best way to take the tour is if you become the uh, society president. That's a good point. That is a very good point. I, I don't know. I might have to fight Heather for that one. She's, she's uh, pretty good at politicking. <laughs> um, I don't I'm, I'm like, 
I, I'm most people know me. I'm I'm a huge proponent of the chapters. I, I think they're like your they're like your second family when they're done well, right? Like it's a, if it's an inviting culture, they bring you in and it's not just, you're, you're not just a cog in the machine. I mean, you're, you're the person that, you know, adds your personality to the mix of, of the, the people that are there. Um, what's really great. <laughs> what's funny is hold on. You're going to love this one. This is like, I, I wish I planned this. I got Gail's. <laughs> <laughs> She heard her ears ringing. This is fantastic. I, Gail, the check is in the mail. This is fantastic. <laughs> um, but to, to, to that point, like the, the chapters are that family away from your, your immediate family, right? Like within the industry. So um, all of us have different groups that we're a part of that accept us and have different cultures and things like that. I think the CPCU chapter is one of those, you know, surrogate families that adopts you or, or you kind of like become a part of. Um, and, and it's really kind of, uh, for me, it's been one of those things where it was like, I've been able to take risks in my career because I always knew I had that professional family to come back to. You know, um, it, it's it was always like a, a huge, um, you know, center of support for me to come back to. So that's something else that uh, kind of you don't really get it until I mean, like, would you say you have to get involved in it personally in order to get that feel for it? I would say yes. Yeah. yeah what would you chapter, say? Heather? I would say the chapter may come to you in some ways just depending on the chapter that you're in because mm. they they you know our chapter does do a lot of outreach for new designees and candidate members and just trying to to help people stay engaged and get involved but if you want to be involved and you want to get that feel of the family environment and really just kind of building that that not only professional, but also personal network that you have within the chapter, you, you have to be a part of it. And you have to decide that, hey, I'm maybe I'm just gonna step onto a committee for a little while if your chapter happens to have committees and take a small role and then just get a peek into a way that you can be involved with the chapter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a good introductory way too. like a lot of people, uh, a lot of people think that to get involved, you immediately have to go into like one of those set kind of like heart hierarchy type of roles. Um, that's not always the case. I mean, if you show up and you're like, look, I really can't give you the time commitment, but you know, I'll be the, the social director or, you know, even smaller, I'll, you know, help organize this one social event that's that we have upcoming or something like that. That's always going to be better than just kind of like sitting on sitting on the sideline and and waiting for it to come to you, you know, um, and, and and not to mention the fact that like you get to add a piece of you to the culture. Right. Like it's not just a static kind of thing. Like there's not I think we live in a um, an industry where there are some of these like hallowed halls. Right. That are these stalwart kind of brands and names and images that exist for hundreds of years. But also we're at a, a, a time where, you know, certain aspects of the industry, like the local chapters, they're they're changing and morphing and evolving, you know, Um I, what would you say, so Jen, if you had to like um, give some advice specifically to chapter leaders, what would be kind of like your 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 best practices or, or just kind of like that like 10,000 foot view, like what should they be looking to kind of like impart into the chapters to make them successful for the members? I would say probably listen to your members. If you mm. are doing the same thing all the time, I have a lot of chapter leaders that will call me and say, you know, we just don't have the numbers that we used to before. We used to have 50 people that would come and now we only have five. Um, listen to your members. Maybe they don't necessarily want to have educational programming all the time. Like you mentioned earlier, add that bit of fun. Social Socializing and having social networking and going to a baseball game or, you know, doing something fun isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's building that camaraderie with each other. It's networking in a different way. 
Um, don't be afraid to do different things. A lot of chapters have started doing um, axe throwing, those um, venues that do the axe throwing, which always used to make our on-site risk manager cringe, um, that people were going to go do axe throwing and you're all insurance professionals. Um, but have some kind of fun outing like that. You know, don't, don't always do the same old, same old. Ask your members what they want and listen to them. Um, and if there's anything that comes up that you don't know where to go, how to handle something that you're looking for, by all means, reach out to me. I may not know the answer. Chances are I might reach out to one of you, like Heather or Matt, somebody in my network within the chapters, uh, to find out if they know someone that can help. Um, oftentimes I'll get requests for, I'm looking for, I don't know, like, does somebody have a sample reimbursement policy? I might not have one, but I can reach out to a chapter and ask for one and see if they'd be willing to share. So there's always that little network that whether you start with me or whether you start with one of your your colleagues or your, you know, somebody from in your professional network, somebody's going to be willing to help you out. And I would tag on to that and say, Jen, leverage the Interact Network, you know, um, because you could post a question out there about chapter stuff and you're going to get an answer from somebody or somebody's going to direct you to someone who might have the answer for you or be able to provide you that resource. Yeah, that's a, a great, great tool that we started um, just this year with everything that's been going on and we are looking to add additional communities in the future. So we will have some more uh, more communities for chapter leaders to to utilize so yeah so uh we have a recommendation from the crowd i think uh tim dodge has a great idea for a uh social networking chapter <laughs> tim i have always wanted to do that <laughs> <laughs> I, look, if you can make it happen, I mean, as long as you got the waiver and the general liability coverage for it, I have absolutely no problem. <laughs> um, I, full disclosure, next week, uh, I think it's next week, we have you queued up, Heather, right, to uh, give us a, a little bit of a Reader's Digest version of a presentation you did at a leadership summit um, that really had to do with kind of creating a chapter that is interactive and engaging and and really kind of like um you know getting the members involved and making them feel like they fit so that's a that's a huge plug for next week i anyone you want anything you want to uh anything you want to like kind of like uh pre uh divulge before we get into that or would you rather leave that a mystery so that we can uh, get everyone to tune into that as well i, I would say if I can get her to get here, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I might be able to bring a special guest as well. And she's currently serving um, in a role in the in the society right now, but she's rolled through a lot of different roles in the chapters as well. And she can really bring some perspective. So I'm not throwing her under the bus here or anything, but I really hope that Joanne Pickle can join us next week and be able to talk about her experiences as a chapter leader. So, um, because she, she led a chapter that was pretty small and it was my first First chapter that I started out in, in in Northeastern Oklahoma and it's become a really vibrant chapter offering a lot of stuff for us you know the community that they have here but I would say um, peek sneak peek into it is we want to be able to share a lot of those you know dive into some of those tools and resources but also talk about you know what what kind of leader does it take to be a chapter leader, you know, um, uh, approaching volunteer leadership is a, is a lot different than if you, you step into a role that has like true authority in an organization. Um, as Matt said many times, it's a lot like wrangling cats if you're a volunteer leader, just because that, you know, it's volunteer resources and, you know, there's different expectations there. But um, I would say tune in next week. Um, Joanne, we want you to be here, so <laughs> I'm calling you out, actually, and uh, let's let's hope that we can put this together with her next week. So I, I completely forget. I'm sorry, Tim. Uh, I, I forget what your background is, but this comment makes me think that he's an underwriter. <laughs> 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 you jump out of the plane first. Let me see how it goes, right? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and not to be outdone, Gail said that we could also do tra flying trapeze classes or, or activities. So that would also be an interesting activity for, for some of the more or, or le less risk averse folks within the society. Um, well, no, I, I want to thank you, Jen. This has been fantastic. Um, I'll, I'll give you, you know, parting words, any final thoughts in terms of, you know, the chapters, how they operate, where they're headed, um, you know, or, or just how people can get in contact with you if they are chapter leaders and they're, they need some help running their chapters. Sure. Um, just a heads up about Heather. Uh, I was part, I sat in on the session that you and Joanne and you had someone else with you. Um, it, was Jeff, it was Jeff Cooden. He was actually, he's okay. out of the Boston chapter. Yeah, yeah, so I sat in on that session. It was a great session. So tune in next week if you want to have some, some good information. Um, chapters, chapters are ever evolving. I think now more than ever with, you know, all of this virtual that's come about because of COVID, I think it's a great thing. It's a way for people to, a lot of people that have been, removed from the chapter that haven't been able to get out of the office that haven't been able to take that time away now don't have to leave you can just you know tune in click on your computer as long as you can get a little bit of time um, it's been a great thing um, who knows where chapters are going to be in the future um, we've talked about virtual chapters and all sorts of other options so um, anybody has any questions about chapters feel free to reach out to me uh, my information is on the society website on the staff listing, which I think is under about us. Um, but you can reach me at J Polachek, P O L A C H E K at CPCU society.org. Happy to help. However I can. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, any final thoughts, Heather? No, I'm super excited that you were able to join us today, Jen, just to kind of, kind of, poke around at the chapter world and kind of show everybody a little bit about um, what you do with the society too. And as uh, as Matthew said, kind of pull back the curtain and, and, and see that man operating all the buttons behind the scenes. So. Well, thanks so much for having me. And just knowing you two over the past few years, appreciate all you do for the society and for our members. I think you guys are doing a great job. So thank you. I, and and I was gonna say thank you. It's it's a uh, it's a tough spot to be in the spot that you're in, uh, especially the fact that it's a bunch of volunteers and and members that are paying dues. That um, you know, I, me personally, I think the value that they they get or they should get out of the society is huge compared to what dues they pay. But you would think that they were buying like, you know, the presidential suite at the Waldorf Astoria <laughs> in terms of what they're expecting. So I, I appreciate all that uh, you do as, as well as your your compatriots there. Um, and again, you know, thank you very much for taking the time. We're, we're gonna have to do this again as, as uh, you know, uh, news comes out and things change and, and you know, Hopefully, uh, maybe we do this again in a couple of months and COVID is a, a different situation and we're talking about new things that chapters are doing. But, uh, you know, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, a reminder to everyone who's watching live or you watch the recording, again, every every Wednesday, 530 uh, Eastern, we're coming at you with uh, another How to CPCU. Uh, Jen, Heather, have a good night. Thanks. You too, Matt. Bye. Thanks.